delegates and our participants uh, are following, coming into the venue. Uh, for the meantime, for those uh, to understand about the, uh, we have some significant amount of time uh, before we commence in the afternoon. And there are like three topics for discussions. Uh, returning to the uh, previous morning session, if you attended the morning session about 10.30, you probably listened on the discussion from academia from Thailand and Australia of our cooperation in three major issues. And what are the three issues consist of? And if it, first, FAO Australia Asia Pacific Water Scarcity Program. Next, the next topic is capacity building on dispute management for River Basin Committee. And the other uh, topic is supporting warning system for early communication. Wish that all these three topics was uh, supported, and we are honored by our seminar participants from for all three topics. Our uh, participants from the, the Thailand and Australian side will be interconnected for the morning to the afternoon session. In the afternoon, there will be more three uh, additional topics of vital importance and of interest as well. Therefore. If uh, you haven't had anything to eat as a snack or any bio break, you can use this time before commencing the afternoon session to sort of deep, dive deep into a focus because the topics are extremely interesting. So I would like to invite all of you to the afternoon session of the seminar, which is a continuation of the morning session. For the second part, uh, this second part, we got Dr. Rodney Ongstergun, Senior Program Manager, a representative from the Australian Embassy of Bangkok, Thailand. The Rodney will be the moderator. Her expertise on research and development for more than 15 years of her career about urban sustainability, managing environmental and water resources, and governance of environment as well, too. The topic of the afternoon session would be irrigation water requesting and e-sharing. Oh, Weather-based irrigation scheduling service uh, to measure the irrigated water based on the needs of farmers. Uh, the irrigation uh, is the device deployed to analyze the satellite imagery to forecast the water needs the water engineer and a water an expert on water allocation and Ms. Dr. Wara would the uh, associated professor of Kansai uh, University and Mr. Rob Randall, senior fellow of RM Consulting Group, will be the panelists under this topic. And Rob will join the uh, panel discussion online. The second topic about reservoir water quality management for uh, climate recent or uh, urban centers and surrounding programs in Thailand. It's a project. It's about creating of a guideline or a manual for about reservoir water quality, especially algae uh, so surplus or eutrophication. And we got Dr. Rirat Ajashong the head of uh, water sediment and water run from the sent from the RID. And we got our speaker, water specialist from Yulalongkar University. And we got Mr. Kevin Orharam, associate adjunct, professor from Gilfit University for the second topic of discussion. And for the last topic of this session, the water management, management for water sensitive and climate resilient cities. This project apply the nature-based approach or nature-based uh, solution to enhance the water management capacity. The panelists include Mr. Chirapong Lao Pongpit, the Director of Planning and Strategy Division uh, from ONWR. Mr. Nakan Pop from Chad, the Head of uh, Academy. The, uh, from BMA and Dr. Kamun Nat Mithawan, the economist from our UCS program Thailand. 
And on this occasion, I would like to invite all the seven panelists and the moderate upon the stage, please. And from now on, the floor is yours, Dr. Ratmani Angsagun. Good afternoon, all participants. Welcome to the afternoon session. In the morning, we heard the information on the future project. We started the open discussion between Thailand and Australia on three projects. But for this afternoon, we will talk about the ongoing projects. From the lesson learned from these interesting projects, we will learn about the cooperation between Thailand and Australia. So we can see what lesson learned we can apply in the future. We have interesting projects from nine panelists today. And so uh, we already informed you that we have three projects mentioned earlier. First, irrigation water requesting and uh, water quality management, or reservoir quality, water quality management and wa water management for water sensitive and climate resilient city. We have nine uh, panelists from Thailand and Australia. So let's start from the first project. It is the project that uh, allocate uh, the irrigated water uh, and it can come up with the, the more accurate forecast. And we and the farmers can take part in this uh, project. So I'll start from Mr. Jiti Pong. Uh, Sam Jiti Pong, could you please tell us about this project and uh, what's the progress so far? Well, thank you very much. Uh, greetings for the afternoon. I would like to present this in Thai. First off, I would like to mention about the historical background about this project of the inception. This project uh, was created on the framework of cooperation we call AFTA or the Australia Free Trade Agreement. And according to this framework, it's about to create a committee, joint committee between Australia and Thailand on the aspect about agriculture issues. So the Royal Irrigation Department was participated in 2010. After this cooperation, after the participation, this cooperation between the uh, AWP and the Irrigation Department Thailand, uh, we discussed about the water management of water for agriculture use in 2019. In this agreement, we proposed about the application of uh, uh, technique of water adoring concept in Thailand, which this proposal was approved by our, uh, both from the Royal Education of Thailand and Australia as well. The objective of this project uh, there are three aspects to it. The first aspect is about the deliver of water and deliver and sustainable. Secondly is uh, about the improving the service levels of uh, the water users and the irrigation department. Thirdly is about the cooperation between a water service provider, which is us, the irrigation department and our water consumers with the intention to deliver of irrigation precision an accurate uh, streamline and precise irrigation management to be exact. In this project, we have uh, created a pilot area at, at the uh, BG location, which is in District 2 of the irrigation zone. In this project, we have changed its name on ordering into water requesting, from water energy requesting to sharing. Uh, the intent of this name change was to reflect upon the economic and social status of Thailand for the Thai context. So after uh, uh, 
uh, and proceeding with the project. We had a comparison to Australia and Thailand. There are some details that are quite in compare and contrast, similar and differences. The first thing, once you mention, when it comes to water ordering, when receiving water, and calculating water and areas and so forth, the, it seems that uh, they distribute uh, to the individual farmers. But if that was compared to Thailand, when it comes to water management or receiving water, it's not on each individual farmer, but it will be dispersed and delivered to uh, the groups of people rather than on the individual. That is the, uh, the major difference between Thailand and Australia. The water users or the consumers in Australia, when water ordering, the people using water are the people who decide on the amount of water and when the water should be delivered. But in Thailand, before receiving water, they must have a meeting. It's like a town hall, a meeting between the uh, officers of the irrigation department and um, the farmers, and then how much water quota to be given that, to that group. Thirdly, this is a methodology. After the water consumers, water users have ordered water, the service pro water service provider in Australia, they will have an inspection and give the quota and the time specifically and inform the water users of when delivered. But for the Royal Education Department in Thailand, after we have the plan or the rounds of water delivery, they will inform the group of farmers and the water users and begin delivering water according to the results of that town hall meeting. So after delivering water in Australia, the farmers or the water consumers, they, they can begin uh, turning on and turning off the tap. And they have to measure the amount of water used uh, during receiving the water, about how much water have been used. And in the end, they will be uh, delivering water and the service provider will inform about how much the water has cost and the quota of water, how much is left for future use. That are some details that uh, is practiced in Australia. But in Thailand, after receiving water, the person to turn off the tap are, is actually the officer of the Royal Education Department and the water delivery has to stop. According to the rounds that have been decided together, there will be no charges pressed on the farmers. So when it comes to water usage in our culture, we don't charge. Next. So in summary, the difference, clear the dis distinction between Australia and Thailand with water ordering versus water requesting and sharing in Thailand. Number one, in Australia, when about evaluating the amount of water delivered and uh, received or delivered, the farmers are the one who decide clearly. And in Thailand, water that it can be distributed and shared will be decided by the uh, center of province from the Royal Education Department of how they will uh, decide how much group and how much area, how much water will be delivered. But nonetheless, it depends on the group meetings, the town meetings between the groups of farmers and the officers of the Royal Education Department. The second major difference is about the area. In Australia, the air, uh, agriculture areas is quite large compared to Thailand, uh, Thailand is quite small. In Thailand, when it, if like a thousand times smaller than Australia, because I visited Australia before and had a field trip, have a field study, Australia did more than uh, like about 1,000, 2,000 hectares, right? But for Thailand, it's like 10 to 100 hectares only. So you can see the size comparison, Thailand is a lot more smaller. So operation of water ordering, or have a, a, a building, a premise, right? One, one, one building, to, uh, the, the major valve can cover about 10,000 hectares, right? But for the 
uh, one million, but more than 1,000 farmers, for instance. So to deliver one on the individual basis, it means that we need about 1,000 uh, buildings to uh, estimate routes, right? So the context in Thailand and Australia is different. In Australia, the water users, they have to pay for the water they use. And the quarter they will receive, if there is an access, I can actually be sold to other farmers that need it, which I see is an incentive for us to conserve water as a type of incentive. But compared in Thailand, we don't have charges for water for agriculture use. This is a, a, a challenge notion. What can we do to create an incentive for the Thai farmers to conserve water like the Australian farmers? Because we don't charge them. Then there's the Thai farmers don't see the reason why to conserve water. And finally, when there um, is a uh, violation of any agreement or procedure in Australia, according to Australian law, uh, there is charges, right? But in Thailand, there's only an understanding of water users versus, uh, and the uh, officers of the Royal Irrigation Department. We can enforce legally or any punishment or press charges, but water uses, we use the, um, the pressure, uh, social pressures that have been practiced in the past till, till present. And finally, after after we uh, have to proceed with this project we have a plan to develop of uh, irrigation plans for our pilot area with the application irisat which dr worrywood will expand on the details and our plan is to apply with, uh, with Iverson so that we can plan about water delivery and follow up on water usage to dive into detail and closely monitor as if we can uh, monitor in real time or near real time, which the outcome and it would enable us to uh, manage irrigation policies more precisely and accurately. And I hope, expect that when it comes to irrigation efficiency, if we can apply technology, we'll improve our efforts and develop uh, efficiency of irrigation efforts and continuously it will uh, create water stability and security when agriculture for agricultural use in Thailand we use all consume a lot of water. About sixty to eighty percent of water used is actually uh, entirely is used for agriculture use. But if we can conserve water for agriculture use, it means that we can have water that can other and apply to other sectors. So, when water usage for other sectors, they can also have water security as well. So, finally, this is a pilot area that we have measured water levels a water gauge in the area. And this is how we use the current meter of our previous efforts. As of now, thank you very much. Thank you. Queen Sum Titipong explained the comparison or difference between water requesting and water ordering of Australia. He also mentioned the importance of water measuring that will make the uh, water allocation more precise. He also talked about IRISAT and how it can uh, support the water allocation. So I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Warwood. IRISAT. Irisat. In Australia, I think they call it weather-based irrigation scheduling service. But when I write that down, I will write satellite and weather-based irrigation scheduling service. I was accustomed to Irisat for about a decade or so 
even before this cooperation efforts. I uh, looked it up on the internet and went to search for when it comes to irrigation or in water management or any new technologies and I found Irisat. I stumbled upon Irisat. And what's surprising was Irisat, there's uh, two platforms actually. Irisat that uh, you see in this slide, big I, RRI small, and SAT capitalized. This is uh, the Australian side. But there's another Irisat platform. It's the same acronyms, but all in small letters. Was developed in from Italy. But these two, the difference is that in Irisat Australia is an open source. Who whatsoever has a Google account or Gmail account, they can log in and can use the entire world. But Irisat, the Italian version, you have to subscribe. Right, to be able their services. And I think the services are quite similar, I presume. So eerie set, once I figured out, I was so excited because it seems to be like a tool that should answer of the challenges of the irrigation department. So I proposed it to the Royal Irrigation Department for a whole decade. I had a um, seminar, met the general directors, right? Uh, the first time there was, uh, the first time, the general director had uh, other things to do. I got sick second time, and then finally, uh, both uh, Queen Mishra and uh, the School of uh, Irrigation, they have uh, given importance, and now we're in discussions. But before I pursue, Irisat, as you can see. Oh, my apologies, I think you need to uh, point to the mainstream screen. The picture to your left, the diagram to your left, it's a screenshot that you once you locked into Irisat, it will show you the area or area of our of the uh, uh, the east of Australia, and you can see there are pins, uh, the marks that are weather stations, which is the heart of Irisat. We call it as weather based because they use this base and these stations to measure the weather as a network of the east of Australia. Is the database that uh, the forecast of water uses to be extremely accurate. Now, why I, I'm in presenting about Irisat is that one, Irisat can forecast the need of water usage of plants ahead of time. In the past, it was eight days, but Irisat has uh, version 2.0 actually forecast by seven days. And uh, you'll probably wonder why only one day decrease, right? It means that they can expect uh, water usage. According to theory, EUSAT uses satellite technology to survey the area, the target area. If you mark your uh, any area on this world, on this globe, EUSAT will have the satellite will feed data. We call that crop health, which can be translated to a value of uh, the total value of water usage of the of the of the plant, so then the satellite will have data, will will will, will, cross, will circumnavigate the world, eight days, right? So you can't uh, tell the, the the satellite to immediately get the the data, right? Because the satellite needs to circumnavigate or rotate around the globe. So by case if like six days, seven days ago, right? That be previous. Of, and then with the weather forecast, and they calculate the ETO value ahead of time. This is why it enables about the water usage of the, the plants ahead of time. So Irisat, why I've selected and recommended the uh, Royal Irrigation uh, Department is that there are three benefits. First benefit is easy and simple to use and quickly. You can teach for like a person five minutes, you don't have to have any education training. Second benefit, is that when it comes to forecast water in real time. Real time changes according to the weather conditions. Third benefit is free. And I hope that it will be continue to be free for in the future. And I asked Rob, is Erie said, are you going to charge, subscribe like what the Italians do? And Rob, uh, uh, nodded and was still free. If, if it was remain free, it would be fantastic. So uh, uh, the irrigation department and I was like, how can we use Irisat to apply to your work? And we create the platform for real-time canal operations in Thailand.
In Thailand, we have 170 projects and we have a thousand canals. And if we had to evaluate the need for each canal on a daily basis from seven morning of this station, who's, who's going to be responsible for? But every set can do so. And to the picture to your right, I call this Eurostat platform for canal operation. I've been on uh, site of all the projects in, as of now, uh, 205 projects that I've personally visited in the 17 agencies throughout the country. And that's, that's all I can, get, I can do, you know why? Because uh, Ajama Shah only submitted uh, that and the latest information that we have is only this. But trust me, there's a lot more. And I'm about to conduct a training, I create a workshop of using Irisat and have the participants to use their actual project. If you're here from China Sud, from this, that project, you bring the data sheets with you. And if you want to forecast on what canal that you're responsible for, use Irisat, one day workshop is done. And now I have 105 projects. Done. Using Irisat is so simple that you just click the mouse and click on the red area. After the cursor is pointed to the red area, and then there will be a pop-up of the project and you can see the data of that red area. Now, this I uh, tested by the Shenasud area because I know I'm going to talk to the director of the Shenasud project, right? So like, I tested that the system about two, three days ago. After clicking to Shenasud area, what is shown is that you will know the KC of the Shenasud region or Shenasud area. And I did that about five to six days ago, like uh, in July. And you get a KC on the date that the satellite had passed over the latest. And every eight days uh, on, high, on hindsight, on the time that you intend, the default is actually a whole entire year. So each uh, picture in the diagram and the image, they have a KC of the Shannon Street project of the entire Shannon Street project in, in hindsight for entire year. You want 20 years, you have to click in the value that you want the KC going back for 20 years, that's possible too. So Irisat, they have a menu, important menu. There are seven menus that you can uh, choose. The menu, you can see there are seven icons and are uh, expanded. Uh, the first one is called crop health. Once crop health, you get uh, according to the picture. The second menu is forecast. It will forecast about the water needs of the future, at least by seven days in advance. The third menu is called apply water. It will give the information and data about the plot, the area plot that you about your studying. But uh, how, what's the moisture content in the soil, for instance? Well, the previous moisture content, it will tell about the historical moisture content of the soil, uh, rainfall. You'll know that uh, from before uh, planting, sowing the seeds, when you, uh, wa uh, irrigated water is used. So we, we can uh, calculate the root zone of the area. This is apply water. Fourth, irrigation scheduler. This option is about, it tells you about, okay, moisture is today, but if the situation continues as forecasted, uh, when is the next round of water that you need? We call it irrigation scheduling. And after the end of the season, we call it the seasonal report. The needs of the entire season, how much rainfall, what, how much irrigation water has been used. It was a summary report completed. And sixth option, that's why I put it in black, seasonal crop water use map. It only tells you about the area, it's not that useful. And the seventh is field settings. This tells you about this plot of area, what kind of crop species are, are is planted, when uh, intended water use, schedule but you'll actually uh, use water when a certain amount of moisture has evaporated on the seven menus you can see that the first option or one and two crop health and forecast is the one that you, is, you, is able to be used in thailand anything that's red that is in red like we'll apply water green scheduler like and connected to seasonal report uh, these are uh, the three options that is not applicable in Thailand because Irisat only linked in the weather stations in Australia only. So in Thailand, you click on 
this right and soon into thailand there is no weather stations in thailand so the data is, is unusable in field settings there's some options that is applicable here in thailand now this is the second menu after you're clicking on the area you will know the kc and then uh, still useless but if you click on the second menu you get an answer that the chance project the area about 80 hectares and the eto on, on the 20, 26th of july in all 27.2 millimeters per seven days and they can actually tell you the area per point and ears that can also tell you the uh the possibility of rainfall as well too but you see the first chart to the far right it will tell you about probably of rain and about use that to your decision making the probability of rainfall how much water you're going to use that is the second menu now you can see that after uh, testing uh, menu three four five and seven there's no data shown why because it's linked or paired with the weather uh, stations this is a problem but this problem can be mediated by creating my own platform that dr sumchit sumchit pong mentioned i warson i have to create a new platform to uh, import uh, here's that information the weather stations to solve uh, our own platform but the platform that is created is a platform that's fixed to the area and location if you bought the uh, aluminum basin applicable yes but must be changed but here is that you can be applied anywhere in the world now let's go back to australia again you can see that there are weather and uh, climate stations if you use the same options in australia all the um, options in the menus will be shown like menu four we call it um, irrigation scheduling is designed like a meter like a scale like a gauge that a full gauge like water is full like okay the water is not full in the field and each day how much does the crop use the the scale will actually uh decrease uh eventually right until to a level that it needs water to be uh, refilled right so the meter tells you how much water level but the program will inform you that the moisture has reduced by about 20 millimeters in the seven uh days ahead you don't you do not need to refill but in australia you'll be able to reap the full benefits of the menu of the system but in thailand only use two menus only now the reason why i use that uh, something's wrong with, um the room was really sensitive by the way now coming back to my topic this is uh information data that rob have sent to me to the left is um, a cappuccino cup cappuccino is a platform in vietnam that they created and specializes in monitoring and uh, uh vietnam uses uh air set like us but they're more advanced because cappuccino the platform can extract air set uh, data into their platform they're able they they can uh link uh to the weather stations in now um, the cappuccino after extracting uh, air set it looks the same but for thailand we do not have that capability i have requested uh to rob before is that possible And finally, there are two things I want to mention. So if you want to apply and use Irisat for real-time canal operations, uh, menu one and two is good. But you want to do about smart farming uh, to oversee how much farms that will use, how much water is still not applicable. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can see the picture how Irisat help water irrigation of uh, RID more precise, like Dr. Warwood said. Currently, Thailand is uh, Thailand uses Irisat, but we still have some issues, and we have the Australian expert who uh, help 
uh, or who support the cappuccino application of Vietnam, so we can see the application in Vietnam, which can be applied to Thailand. So maybe soon we will have the cappuccino application thanks to this cooperation. Now I'd like to welcome Rob Randall, the uh, irrigation expert who support the previous uh, irrigating program and uh, uh, irisat. Hi, Rob. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, thank you. So um, thanks for joining. Um, so you have heard Kun um, Tipong about the water requesting and so are would about Ilisat. We just like um, you to please, um, from your experience of this cooperation, could you please um, provide your reflections on Thailand opportunities and challenge on irrigation water requesting? and how Elisat would have potential to strengthen the work we are doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, it is a pity that I cannot be in the room with you, but I um, know many of you and have had quite experience with some of you, and I am excited to hear both the previous two speakers talk about uh, the work. Can I have my PowerPoint? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Next slide. There have been many exchanges um, on water requesting and sharing to Australia over the time. And these are just some of the photos from, from the last visit. May I comment that there are many different systems in Australia and yes, uh, Mr. Somcha Pong mentioned that we have large farms, but when they visited, they also saw uh, my property, which is a very small farm. So we have many different types, and the challenge is to get develop one that suits uh, Thailand. Next slide, please. What, during the visit, you can see on the left there that even some of the people learnt to fire boomerang. Um, on the bottom, you can see the Murray River, and on the bottom right, you can see where we were showing Irisat at the last visit. Next slide, please. In terms of developing a water requesting or sharing, up until now, particularly in, in uh, Thailand, one of the limitations has been measurement. And a key principle is that we must be able to measure the demand how much is used and what the losses are. That's the starting point, but we also need to understand channel capacities of the secondary and tertiary channel. And on the right hand side was a publication that uh, we did in nine, 2019, and it still is relevant today. And I think once we start the, once the uh, Thailand starts this pilot, we'll start to understand some of the principles about the channel capacity, understanding the individual flow rate, understanding the structure types, because in Thailand, you use more undershot gates. In Australia, we use overshot. That's a technical aspect, but it's very important. So understanding that, how you control the structures. On the right-hand side there, I show some automation, but we also have some a very manual control structures just like you do in Thailand. The one key area in Thailand is you have uh, problems with uh, controlling pumping. There is different rules for the control of pumping and that makes it a bit unique. And of course, you've spoken about the governance, but we have many different systems in Australia going from the rotation system to a fully on demand and, and it will take the pilot to determine what is possible. Um, in addition to that, the comment was made that you need an incentive. I think the incentive in Australia for water sharing and capacity has been a drought. Every time you have a shortage or scarcity of water, that is the scarcity, that is what made us develop our water requesting and sharing. And yes, we have good um, governance, we have good fee structures, but it is always a drought. And I think it was the drought that started the concern in Thailand. And although we don't want a drought, 
if we got a drought, suddenly we would find people interested in developing water sharing and scarcity. Next slide. And IRISAT, which the exchange we had in, in Adelaide and the exchange we've had since, and it's been um, Barrow, Mr. Professor Varrowood has had an interest in it, and it is that interest that has enabled us to start the measurement. And IRISAT provi can, provides the opportunity to predict crop use, record crop use, compare it with the other measured flows, estimate losses, and then we can identify ways of improving the distribution and, uh, and developing the appropriate for Thailand. So I think IRISAT is actually a bit of a game changer in terms of developing water sharing. And from Australia, we would love to be involved and help you interpret the results and apply the principles to develop an appropriate Thailand solution for water requesting and sharing. And yes, the, and the cappuccino model in Vietnam was a Vietnam solution. And we would, we have the Vietnamese uh, developers are keen to talk and share their knowledge with Thailand and we can help, uh, help arrange that. And yes, there is many opportunities and I think it's exciting and it's so pleasing to hear the enthusiasm from, from the two previous speakers about what can happen in Thailand. So let's hope in three, four years time, we are talking about not cappuccino, it might be a cup of tea or something else, the program called in Thailand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob, for your insights. And please uh, stay with us for the Q&A session. Um, do, do the I know that participants may have questions, but we will keep that after all presentations are offered. Now let's move to the second project, which is Reservoir Water Quality Management, which is the collaboration between RID, Tulalongkorn University, Griffith University, and Griffero, Cicero. And, um, and today we have our representative here. I would like to start from Dr. Arirat from RID. Could you please tell us about the water quality issues in the reservoir and the activities under your project? Why do we need to be concerned about water quality? Now, we collect the fee and most users are the uh, provincial water uh, water supply department we actually monitor the quality of water but we use the basic parameters for example the oph we and um, this is the only the basic parameters as i said so we would like to manage the water quality sustainably in the organization. And what should we do to achieve that? That's why we integrate the implementation with the land department or Department of Agricultural Development, because we are only a, a small part of uh, RID. Luckily, we were supported by the uh, uh, Agri agricultural research department and they can provide us with the research budget we also can visit australia to their support uh, when we first established the, uh, the project uh, and we would like to to become sustainable we need the international cooperation since we have the thai australian cooperation australia can be our good role model that's why we have more discussion at first we coordinated with kunke and we would like it to become the official cooperation and Australia is kind enough to support us. The cooperation is divided into two phases. First, we would like to create the standard and we uh, to RID. That's why both uh, Thailand and Australia, um, they, uh, so Thai official can go to attend the training in Australia and they can transfer the knowledge within the country. Then 
we will enhance the knowledge or capacity, then we can solve the problem uh, with our ID. Not only is about the uh, utilization or the nutrition leakage in the in in the uh, water resources because uh, maybe it is because of the the change of land use in the upstream and sometimes we face the deforestation uh, problem then they can cut down trees to plant rubber trees or turn the forest into rubber plantation the clear problem is wheat for example in our ID office five um, has a, a weed problem. That's why we need to do the bio control, which uh, we would train from Australia. In terms of sustainability, this is a good choice or good option. And so um, our government agency also take uh, care of this or are responsible for this. Then we expand it to Aquavos, uh, we have a pro problem with beautification and aqua wash can help us look at the overview of Thailand more clearly so we can see where the issues are and how we can solve the problem. After two phases, we know that Australia are concerned uh, about the people's living or way of life and what they do should not pose the environmental impact. So we, our ID can use the can use this or apply this for the sustainable water management. And we can scale up to other agencies as well. On the other day, we talked to the uh, provincial water supply division or, or department or the land development department who can work with us in the future. Thank you very much, Dr. Arira. She. Uh, stress on the importance on the integrated cooperation among agencies to ensure the sustainable water management and next the next panelist could you please tell us about the role of this project and you talk about the collaboration with many agencies or many sectors we don't have uh, a practical or a practical roles Normally, we work on the water quality and actually I'm um, under the marine science department. Uh, now, previously, I uh, studied the Karin Dam or Chiolan Dam from upstream to downstream. We also look at the nutrient and pollutant from watershed to the stream and uh, down on down to the, the the ocean, and I know I knew I have known Kun Arirat a few years back because she set up a small project and it was not enough to implement it, and um, she knew Dr. Sucha uh, and he worked on sedimentation rate for Kun Arirat, which is the parallel project. That's why he introduced me to her. This is not an easy project because it involved pollutant and many things. And the budget was really low, so I had to think about it first. I was not, uh, I'm not a biologist. That's why I had to contact my friend to, to work on that. And after a year of implementation, she said she had the Thai Australian project. And um, and she asked me if I know someone from Australia. And I thought about uh, Mr. Kevin because he's been working on this for 30 years. So I invited him to join me. Since we are friends and we have a personal relationship, he, we can work faster. And he keep uh, visiting us because he is in the field and he has some connection. Uh, that's why we can work very fast in this project. Uh, we start from the training. Then I 
have another agency to join with the support of AWT. Jula Longan University also helped with the training last year, and maybe in April last year. Uh, then Kun Arirat received the uh, the fund to visit Australia for the training. And uh, that's why we got we received the AWB fund. Uh, so we could learn and we serve as a translator as well. And then I got back home. Uh, actually, he he was on holiday and I had a training and, and a meeting. That's why I take him along. So we, and that uh, and because we are friends, we can work work things uh, or speed things up. Uh, we can call them the friendship to cooperation team, and we can see the picture that uh, we uh, call. We have the multi-agency cooperation. Maybe uh, Ms. Dr. Kevin from Griffith University. Dr. Kevin, could you please provide your reflection on how Australian experience be share and adapt through this cooperation, and what are the next steps you are planning now with the team? Okay, thank you. Um, just like to clarify in the program, it says that I was attending this meeting online. I'm actually on holidays, and I need to disguise my whereabouts better from Dr. Arirat, clearly. Um, so as um, Penjai said, it's been an absolute pleasure to work uh, with RID and Chula uh, on this program. Um, I'd like to break the project down into why, when, um, and what and who is going to do something. So during the first phase, the why was very easy. Um, RID spent approximately 250 million baht per year on aquatic weed management, which is largely mechanical. Um, and so they need to do something about the eutrophication because it's the eutrophication which is driving these issues. Um, it's widespread. When we say where, it's all over Thailand. Some are worse than others. Um, and when is obviously as soon as possible. Um, what, what we're going to do is re we've recommended expanding the water quality monitoring program by just three parameters because I believe with only three increased parameters, we can um, differentiate the reservoirs from worst to best. We can start obviously at the worst and obviously take into consideration the business criticality of that reservoir for RID. Um, we can start with the 25 largest reservoirs because between those 25 reservoirs um, contains about, I think, 65% of RID's water resource. Um, and then the last part, who's going to do it, is, is still a subject uh, which needs more discussion and work during stage two. I'm a great believer in RID taking ownership of this program and doing the monitoring themselves and doing the testing themselves and doing the reporting themselves, um, with the assistance of Chula and some other agencies. So the first part of stage two, which is beginning pretty much now, um, I will travel to Thailand and do the sampling and monitoring on each of these 25 reservoirs and take as many RID staff with me as possible, just so I can show them exactly what they're being asked to do. Um, and it's quite an extension from what they currently do. They only insert probes in the water at the moment. They do not actually sample the water and they do not test the water externally. So we're asking them to do quite a lot of different stuff. Um, once we do that, We'll conduct another workshop and I'll be able to report on the indexation and the importance of this approach to tackling the uh, processes of eutrophication. Uh, we will have another exchange visit to um, Australia, this time with more departments. As Ari Rat said, there's a lot of stakeholders in this, it's not just RID. Um, the Land Development Department, uh, which I spoke to yesterday, have a crucial role in this because they will be the ones assisting with intervention strategies, which inevitably must be made. Um, and then probably um, a final workshop to, to wrap up, look at progress and um, see if there's any further work to do. Um, so I'll be coming back to Thailand three times to do the sampling. So Gemma, I'll send you an invite. Why don't you come out in the boat and see how it's being done. Okay, thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kelvin, um, Professor Pinsai, and Dr. Arirat for your insights of the project. Um, Kondiyat. <laughs> I'd like to provide further information. The key output of this project is the guideline for measuring water quality in the reservoir. From the Friendship Corporation of three panelists, we received the guideline for our ID. And currently, we started to apply this guideline. Like three panelists said earlier, the next step is besides our ID, that uh, take that uh, look after the reservoir. Uh, they will work with the uh, upstream stakeholders, for example, the land development department and other agencies. So it expands the scope of work to uh, enhance its efficiency. And I'd like to move to the third project which is water management for water sensitive and climate resilient city. This project tried to apply the nature based solution to support the water management or urban water management and we received the support from ONWR, oh sorry, ONEP and BMA. We have the expert from Monarch University as well including the expert team from Thailand, or Dr. Apukamon Nat. Today, she cannot join us uh, in person, but actually she'll join us online. So I'd like to invite Professor Kamon Nat, the Thai expert, to tell us about the objective and framework of this project, please. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? And uh, I'd like to share the presentation slides. Can you see my presentation? I'd like to give you the background of the Resilient Urban Center and Surround or RUCAS pro, uh, project or program. We propose this program in response to climate change and the urbanization. We try to adjust it to uh, to fit the investment in infrastructure so we can serve the needs or it can serve as the multi-purpose infrastructure. This project is aimed to be efficient, effective, and fair for all stakeholders. Based on this concept, when we implement the pro program, we will consider many elements, especially the engagement of all stakeholders, and we prioritize the uh, programs to serve the need of people under the limited resources. We may paint the picture by selecting the, uh, the study area, then we demonstrate the nature-based solutions um, to solve the flooding issues, or to solve drought, or to ensure the effective water consumption. To fit the urban context, we also uh, solve the issue of air pollution. Next, we use many innovations in the design or we use the, uh, to, to fit the surrounding context, then we scale up to other areas. This program built the foundation to ensure the sustainability. The other thing we did, this program used the nature-based approach to solve all problems related to climate change. The key objective is to build awareness and improve the implementation efficiency. That's why we use economic tools, including database, uh, in line with the training. So we also train the related agencies so they can apply the knowledge for, for the future use. In designing the area or in 
practicing the initiative approach, for example, water management or managing the water flow um, or um, water treatment, uh, creating the suitable environment to uh, so we try to apply the nature-based solution with every in every aspect, and we try to uh, scale out to many areas. We share knowledge and experience with the Australian experts, and we try to apply it to Thai context. We exchange knowledge with uh, both local and international experts. We also host the training for those responsible in different areas. Uh, for example, the local people or agencies. We selected the study areas first. This program is at international level, so we have four countries joining, uh, such as Thailand, Laos, PDR, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Uh, for Thailand, we selected two areas in Bangkok, which is the Suan Pa On Nut or On Nut in Prawet area, uh, which is like the land, west landfill. And uh, the other one is Makassan because they have a vast land under the responsibility of rail, Thai Railroad. It was surrounded by the pri uh, private properties and how we should take care of these areas so we can properly use these areas in the future. In this project, we started from the cooperation with related parties, for example, BMA, who owns the, the area or who takes care of the area. We collected the data from surrounding communities so we can learn how they were impacted with, by this issue. We also discussed with the related public and private sectors. Uh, BMA also worked with the private sectors such as DC and PDD to improve this uh, or nut area of or, or nut park area, but uh, our program sees that it is possible to upgrade this area or to to maximize its efficiency. That's why we volunteer to join them. Uh, we also work with Kasesat University. That's why we created the cooperation among four parties. After selecting the areas and came up with the suitable areas, we collected data to study the urban context. Then we look at the risk of each area. Next, we were supported and advised by experts. Both in both from Thailand and Australia, so we design or manage these areas um, based on the natural approach. Uh, for example, we can use many many um, methods in combination with the design. Uh, for example, we may use the natural raw materials. Then we analyze the cost efficiency to see how much will it cost and the benefit for the society to see if it's worth the investment. Lastly, we uh, propose the source of funding and what to do to ensure the, the maximize spending or, or optimize the spending. So this is what we're doing. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamonat. And this project received the full support from ONEP and BMA in terms of policy and the, the area. Now, now let's move to Mr. Chirpong. Uh, after listening to the framework from Dr. Kamonat, uh, is it aligned with the climate change and especially the NAP of Thailand? Thank you. I would like to share uh, some slides, bring up some slides. Yes. 
Uh, when it comes to uh, the natural resources environment of our office, we are an agency that comes to policy uh, changes of uh, climate change and on interrelating aspects such as about the adjustment of uh, climate change or national adaptation plan in short. Now, that what has been uh, denoted when it comes to uh, climate change is uh, aspect risk uh, operations under this project is a cooperation between Thailand and Australia as well too. I would like to explain about the coordination of this project, how, why it's at the national level. Next slide. This is the national policies uh, when it comes to climate change. We have uh, the national level that is about uh, sustainable growth that is environmental friendly and all the details of the national policy plan, we talked about the impacts of climate change and adaptation of climate change as well too. In the main strategy, uh, when it comes to national strategy, which is in level two, we have the plan that mentioned about the greenhouse gas reduction and climate change as well too. And uh, when it comes to uh, the 13th economic and social development plan, we mentioned about, about coping about disasters uh, that is a result of from climate change. Under this project, it will uh, decrease and mediate all the impacts of climate change. And uh, when it comes to national strategy to cope with the changes, which is level three, we mentioned about the adaptation as well too. And the next slide. And another plan that is of vital importance, of equal importance, we call it National Adaptation Plan, or we abbreviate it by NAP or NAP. This is why the Social Development and Human Security Ministry is in uh, the process of about, uh, the Committee of Climate Change uh, so, uh, with, uh, so that we can proceed with the frame uh, to the Secretariat uh, the, uh, of the Immunitivity uh, uh, Human Rights Commission is that to show that Thailand has given emphasis of uh, the changes of climate change and is aware of it. And one of the principles that are in the plan is about giving importance on nature-based solutions or how to mediate problems by using the uh, nature, natural means and also eco-based adaptation as well too. Uh, which is two principles are important uh, because in the future the tendency of uh, climate change will be extremely severe and by using this framework or any structure of uh, construction that we use personally may not answer the needs of the future this is why what you can see no matter it was uh, any hard uh, construction structures overseas that have applied of nature-based solutions so as australia for instance uh, in the past we you seen examples of uh, trying to just thing the uh, uh, anything hard material in a mix with uh, nature-based materials or even increase greener areas and encourage uh, access to the public uh, of the areas as well too. I do believe that this is a, a concept and a principle that in the future that we will uh, uh, promulgate to Thailand. One thing uh, about this project that is in alignment of uh, NAPS. In, in NAPS there are six categories and anything that is directly it comes to water management and uh, human security from the area of this project, the, the pilot area that is in Bangkok, two areas, uh, which is uh, Arnold Park, which is used to be our garbage pile before, and another area, which is also uh, a source of, of, of water used in, in Bangkok as well. So these two areas uh, have issues on water management and green areas. When it comes to uh, what this project answers to the national plan or NAPS is about the deduction of the risk or impact of flooding in the areas in Bangkok. And one more thing I want to mention is about the um, managing water quality in these two areas. Another an important aspect is about the design 
is that it's more flexible and yeah, environmentally friendly to climate. This is an important uh, aspect because nature-based solutions, the idea behind it will focus on the utilization and benefits of diversity, such as uh, using the area for, uh, for the public or use it for uh, recreation or using more green areas, green areas like the lungs of the city and also managing quality water qualities such as wetlands. And one more thing I want to mention is about the, the uh, source for the public to exercise and an area for education. And another aspect of importance is about the design under this a project will support the issues, problems of the urban heat island that in Bangkok has a tendency to have some uh, information and data that the, you know, the temperature in Bangkok is hot and will exacerbate in the future. This is why the urban heat island may occur in many patches of Bangkok, which in the policy or this project and all the uh, and uh, the agents is that it's the sign of the constant of nature-based solutions, which will help solve problems at the area level. One of the major problems that all you know is flooding and rising temperatures and uh, poor quality of water. And what we want to see under this project, uh, the outcome of success, what does success look like? We must have uh, a blueprint of, for the designing that nature-based solutions, if applied in execution of areas of uh, water management and green areas, how would it look like? And will enable that other areas or other regions to have uh, a study from Bangkok and uh, bring back to their own areas, how much will the budget cost? What is the cost benefit or the return and in, in, uh, investment compared to uh, previous conventional construction? This is why the national plan and environment that we will hope to expand in other regions. We hope that this is an agency will coordinate a uh, liaison between uh, Bangkok and uh, with uh, Australian experts and experts uh, in Thailand as well too. Uh, this I would like to thank uh, to the Australian government to support this project. And I hope that this project, if the outcome is successful, we will uh, showcase it furthermore. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Ndichiropong and Onip is also the chair of the steering committee or JSC. So they bring together the related party to apply the niche based solution. He focuses on uh, making an example to scale it up better and we discussed with BMA intensively so we uh, cascade so we selected two sites or two areas and I'd like to ask Mr. Nakon Pop and when we apply the nature-based solution to manage the water how is it aligned with the water management of BMA and could you please elaborate on the pilot sites? Thank you. The Department of Water um, Waste Management is about the protection and immediate problems of areas of flooding in Bangkok. The problems when it comes to uh, water that are unable to be, uh, uh, be uh, effluent of is because flooding and then served in areas because after rainfall. And when you come to our, our management, is that when it comes to a uh, water waste out of the area, push water out, is that it could be canals, pipes, pumps, and uh, we call it as um, uh, the, uh, we call it as the monkey sheep. So this is like a mini metaphor, right? So when it comes to uh, um, uh, immediate flooding from the northern regions into uh, Bangkok, this is why we got uh, dams around uh, dikes on the Japaya River. And on the aspect that we have uh, proceed with. Uh, uh, this project. This project is about uh, the monkey sheep, which is the, the uh, uh, mini reservoirs uh, that we have uh, discussed with Lucas. We have proposed of this project, and uh, in this area, the zones is that when they cut uh, the monkey sheep in Makassan, it's an area that will ask to support uh, water uh, that is um, in excess from some saying Obi Pawadi. And this uh, Makassan, we have a lot of uh, wastewater from uh, the households. 
and uh, these are wastewater that are from the pipes mm -hmm. and into the lake. Mm -hmm. And in the lake is that we got uh, uh, as a, 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 a tunnel that will lead to the Japria River. It's like uh, the, the life way, uh, way uh, like the blood uh, pathway. This is of importance mm -hmm. that we want to develop the Bing mm -hmm. area so that when water will have, uh, have a higher quality and enable the area in the uh, area, surrounding areas, but then down the area, we power the uh, uh, road so that areas can actually support uh, uh, water resources better, like a, a monkey chic. And this is why we got professors from academia has explained that there are surrounding areas of green areas of the among sun, uh, like is that as aware as a wetlands. And uh, to support when there's rainfall, that will support uh, and the wet these wetlands. We use the water from that can be actually to be treated in open land. And uh, after the water treatment, it will help uh, the wetlands to have a better water quality. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much. And we hope that uh, after a while, maybe in a year, when we meet again in the next dialogue, you can report the actual progress of the project. We have heard information from three interesting projects, starting from water management or uh, water quality management and uh, urban water quality management. Then we will enter Q and A session. We have twenty minutes for this session, and if anyone has a question, please feel free to do so. Thank. I'd like to thank the secretary of ONWR, and um, you actually invite me personally. I think your team has done a great research. I am the, a member of Thai Thai Australian Cooperation Project. You also uh, take my position in this committee. And I also represent the Ministry of Agriculture and RID. So this is um, so I come here in an opportune time. After listening to your presentation, it's quite odd that we meet here uh, with Mr. Kevin. Then we work on a great project inadvertently. And for the Irisat. Uh, that uh, Mr. Wara Wood has worked on for 10 years. He also received the fund and, and he worked in Kong Son Ma Canal in Kampang Pet province. He faced in, uh, some challenges and had some discussion in other events, for example, the weather station or uh, using the data. So this is a chance for us to use this cooperation to solve issues. Uh, and the smaller projects, uh, Jesse mentioned this morning, it includes the Basak Basin. And uh, Mr. Vera Wood from Gasset Sad University, including the uh, Kapara or the, another government agency also conducted the research on Basak river in terms of water allocation or ground wa uh, groundwater. So this can be applied uh, for this cooperative, oh, sorry, cooperation project. Uh, it also involves the, uh, the residue by, uh, mentioned by the professor from Jalalongkorn University. You also brought along uh, Mr. Kevin, who was on the who's uh, on holiday. The residue project is a, a small project. Receiving the fund from the uh, government agency, and this is uh, one of that those projects. It also merged with Thai Australian cooperation, and it was brought to this platform, which is, which will benefit our, our implementation. In this morning, Dr. Ra would 
or uh, many people may not be aware of the JSC Corporation or KSC meeting. It involved the water used for drought management. And we will sign the MOU on this issue between Thailand and Australia. Irisat can be the key tool so we can apply it like Mr. Vera would present it earlier because it's user friendly. We can only solve some problem and we can apply it. Vietnam can actually do it. Oh. And for the water, food, energy nexus, this is one area of uh, one of the areas of co cooperation. This is interesting, as the uh, the committee member of the water irrigation and water drainage. I also have the I also am the committee of the water system in, in the paddy fields. We try to uh, grow the the rice by using a small amount of uh, water. If we bring in ICID and in the web together, so we can work together, uh, which can be linked with IRISAT program. We can expand the scope of work, or, or we can expand the coverage. So uh, that's it on my end, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bhattara, for your recommendation to expand the scope of cooperation. Um, for And IRISAT should be linked with the FAO water accounting. Uh, doctor, what do you think about it? Or do you have any comments? Um, not so sure. when you say water accounting, uh, the FAO will look like. But I heard a news about it that uh, Dr. Ben Cha is, is working there. He said they're in discussions with FAO about creating this water account. So water accounting, uh, the, the principles is about you know, water data and observing how much water we have at present, how much uh, has water been used, and then how much of water is reserved that can be uh, utilized in other aspects. Here we sat. As uh, Dr. Washara mentioned, that is uh, is mine. It's not his. It's actually from Australia. I'm just a user. Here is that. It's beneficial. It's about to forecast about the demand of of, of crops water use, which is appropriate uh, and useful to the rural irrigation department because uh, your job is to send water, right? So you use here is that. You see, you have to concern about the extent. Of the application. Do you have any points to add on that? Can you hear us? Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Just asking if you have any points to add on Dr. Vacherat's uh, comments. Yes, I, I think that um, water accounting um, is brings together many different aspects, including water sharing, including what you do in a drought, um, including planning. Um, so in Vietnam, we talk about, and in, in Australia, we talk about the many different uses of IRISAT, specifically in relation to water resource planning, in terms of location planning uh, is one aspect, operations and management, which is what you're looking at doing in Thailand, but it also can be used at the individual level. But an interesting use that we're finding in Australia is what we call compliance. When somebody is taking water that they should not be using, IRISAT can actually identify that. And IRISAT is being used in court to prosecute somebody who turned off their meter so that the meter was not recording how much water was being used. So there are many different ways. I think the limit to IRISAT is our minds, not IRISAT. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rob. That's a very interesting point. Uh, Any other questions? I would like to ask the permission to ask 
about project number three, nature-based solution. It's really interesting because it's about uh, the 20 year plan, our master plan, national plan when it comes to drive natural strategy. But there are many unique strat uh, questions in the Makassan area that uh, the bed plan, uh, that you use the wetlands to treat for upper treatment for water quality. My question is that are you using the entire entirety of nature-based solutions or you have to design of any water treatment plants? Or is it a blend or a mix with a man and gears if it's green only? Uh, which is, this is the reason why there's questions in my mind which the, uh, the citizens of Bangkok, there's a lot of wastewater and you're just using the wetlands. Is it sufficient enough to treat uh, wastewater in uh, Bangkok? Is it sufficient enough? Yes, I do understand about the uh, Makassan wetlands. I do understand about uh, the forest areas in the park because uh, to me, create the monkey sheep project that will immediate about the impacts of disasters. Yes, I do understand that it's a function that is possible that we can proceed. That I understand. But I want to ask, in reality, is it green and gray, a man machine, nature and machines, or because the topic is that nature-based solutions uh, purely, this is why there's a question in mind. And another question when IRSAT, IRSAT is very interesting. Because from what I've seen as proposed, the probability of rainfall. Because at present, after we test of that the probability, it means it's a tool to show about forecast of the probability of rainfall. If it is, then there's something I'm quite uncertain. Why do we need to have a weather station? Because if you uh, know about the forecast, the probability of, of rainfall at a certain extent, but uh, yes, when there is, uh, if there is a need to create a weather station to measure the amount of rainfall, actual rainfall that can apply to this and that when it comes to water management. So this is why I think it's quite interesting, but the uh, data, that is, uh, it's not migrated. Uh, when, if you ask me that Thailand, we got stations, a lot of stations brought from the, uh, those, uh, or even the Royal Irrigation Department or even of uh, Cascada, we got telemetering. Uh, we got so many systems, but when it comes to this database, it's not integrated together, that's why. Because they're, or why they won't cooperate or what? I don't know, but uh, what do, would the OWR, what could you as an agency could help to mediate and, facility, uh, and facilitate for the benefits for all? But so I really, really um, am curious, is it a model that Australia has developed? Uh, therefore, the probability of rainfall, I'm curious about the accuracy. If the system, how close is it? How precise is it? This is a lot of importance because if we want to manage about uh, delivering water, it plays an important role. So what Dr. Sumshit has presented, but there's one thing that in question is water ordering that in Australia, well, now per persons of use, the, the farmer, the consumer, they can design and decide of how many uh, acres of land about crop area that can be proposed directly. Uh, this kind of design we haven't presented yet. Uh, uh, was it uh, considered about the cost of water yet? Because I don't see the picture that, uh, that uh, when it comes to water cost, initial cost, or in reality is, uh, or water cost was part of the design already, but for in Thailand context, we consider about the cost of water, then we deliver water to the farmers. But that is uh, in reverse. It turns out that the farmers in Australia are the one who calculated from prior. So the, uh, the farmers in Australia, my question is that uh, they have considered about water costs or not. And uh, when it comes to water quality, water quality is interesting. 
Because one of the interesting part is about the Circa Dam. As we all know, when it comes to the primary source of, uh, of a forest, it's quite diminishing. And uh, chemical toxic agents has the Royal Irrigation Department that is responsible for this project is your target. Or you have any data that will support about uh, Circa Dam. Because my suggestion is that it's necessary because in this year, the water levels at Circuit Dam is at an all-time low. When the amount of water is low in the dam, or even about the toxins and pollutants that, uh, for instance, if in the same water amount or in scenarios when the water reservoirs are at an all-time low, it means that the concentration of toxins and pollutants will uh, expand. So this is what uh, quite something of uh, quite uh, anxious and quite uh, worrisome that the Royal Irrigation there. I know that is an electrical project, right? But I do believe that it comes to Royal Irrigation Department must coordinate about water usage. But this project could be used as a pilot with the electrical authority or even the provincial uh, electrical authority can also show about their concerns or not. But nonetheless, you shouldn't separate. This is the responsibility of the electrical authority. This is the responsibility of the irrigation department. It shouldn't be. So, but I do believe that the RED is actually the representative of Thailand and in cooperation with Australia. So you should be the one to spearhead this effort. Thank you. I will leave. Thank you very much. You simply ask question to everyone. So let's start from Dr. Kamonad on nature-based solution and the remaining panelists will uh, answer the water paneling ordering of the two questions about the linkage with the weather stations and water ordering in Australia. Um, then, yeah, we'll go to you later. And the reservoir water quality will answer the question on the pollutant concentration. Dr. Kamonat, please. Thank you very much. Uh, let me uh, spend a short, uh, I'll give you a bit of briefing on the Makassan Pond. First of all, at Makassan Pond, we will use green or gray structure, uh, we will combine or integrate both structures between green and gray. So we use both of them. Um, in this side, this is the demonstration site on nature-based solution. After we, after the demonstration, if it works, We will scale up to other areas, which may be similar to this area. But since this is the demonstration project, we will use a small, uh, a small scale of area, a small area. All you see is the overall area, which looks like a vessel. But we don't implement the project in the whole area. We focus on the site in gray. Is um, so the gray area is the airport link uh, station, and in the north of airport link, this is the development area of the private sector, which can be the arcade or the future stations. We select the site next to the orange area or orange zone. And this is uh, the perfect zone because it has wetland there. Currently, uh, is uh, not fully utilized. That's why we pick this site or this area by applying the nature-based solution to maximize the benefit. The benefit will be the, so it can serve as the, the wetland, oh, sorry, the catchment for, for the surrounding areas. And we will apply several concepts, for example, using trees, or a water flow. So if you see the, the picture here, 
we use the water from Sansap Canal and then it goes through the wetland. And the water flowing in this area can uh, go through can can go through the weeds, so it will undergo the water treatment process. We also plant the crops or plant the trees here as the recreational area, so we can uh, so people can can use this area. Then the water can flow out of this area. Um, for this area, uh, since we don't fully use, uh, since we don't use the whole area, but we will scale up the the project to to other sites. And you can see this area. We design it by uh, using the nature-based approach or nature-based solution. The gray, sorry, the blue area is the wetland, and the green area is a swamp or fern forest. So we can plant the water resisting uh, uh, plants like mangrove. That's why the area can look beautiful with or without water. We also utilize other areas to plant grasses or the uh, floral trees. We also design the area in different layers to make sure that we can use it all year round. I think we are, uh, we, this, so this is the, the concept. Thank you. Now let's move to Mr. Somjit Pong and Dr. Rawood. Well, I want to answer the question of Dr. Susi. When it comes, when it comes to water management in Australia, what I've seen, is that uh, they also have calculated the cost of water, which is the quota that will be received per year, per annual, will uh, cost of water, that how much can be distributed to all the, uh, to the farmers that requested it. Like, like Thailand, they're the same thing. But the only difference is between Australia and Thailand, after they got their quota of water, they were about to know the time to uh, deliver it, and you have to state the type of crop to be grown. But for Thailand, But for Thailand, initially, the farmers that we, we have to have to do a survey about their, their needs of their uh, crops, uh, initial survey first. Then we'll have to consider about cost of water or the cost of water that we have. Uh, is it uh, able to be delivered to the area and the region that they requested? If we can't, because we have uh, the kind of water or like the, the water res reserves that we have, of course, the research that we have, then we will have a town hall meeting and have a negotiations with the, the farmers. This is how we do it. Meeting, negotiate, ask the farmers to decrease their crop area with the intent that the water reserves that is limited to be enough to be distributed. This is difference. Like water cost, water reserves, same thing. So after we have uh, 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 successfully negotiate decreasing about the, the farmlands. Uh, is that we won't uh, enforce it like in Australia, but we request, we ask request for the, uh, the destruction of their crop cultivation area uh, with our intent because we want to sustain our research to be enough to be able to distribute to, to other uh, sectors, not only for agriculture sector only. Then we have a town hall meeting with the farmers so that we have to co-decide of the day to deliver water, the day the farmers will receive the water, circulate it to all, and then moved around to all the water consumers, to all the other farmers. This is what we call request and sharing. It means that once we have negotiated to uh, the, these groups of farmers, it depends on how this village or that group of farmers, how much they will decide for themselves, how much each will get. But in the end, a cultivation land may actually be exceeding than we uh, initially agreed with the farmers. Uh, many times, these areas that exceed, the farmers, they will have to uh, ask additional requests for water. It's not precise, it's not, it's not a finite like Australia. The, the, here's the issues about you know, data collection, Professor. Yes. On the part of ERSAT, 
that the, the secretary has asked. Uh, as of now, IRISAT can give the ETO unit the opportunity, the probability of uh, rain, rainfall uh, ahead of time forecast by seven days. Like uh, tomorrow, maybe 10% probability. Uh, the day after, uh, no rainfall. Uh, the third day, maybe 30% rainfall. This is our forecast, the probability rainfall. But IRISAT once applied uh, in Thailand, which we don't have weather stations. Where's the data from? We don't know what model that probably calculated some uh, in data from somewhere around the world. Then it, it came out these numbers. This is the reason why why if we want to create a, a weather station and measure the ETO in real time, it will be different. Will it be accurate? If you want to. Uh, a weather station in the area and you calculate ETO and then migrate it to ERSAT if the, that data is different, then I will compare. So you're probably about the, the, the weather department, for instance, uh, do they have uh, many stations? Of course they do. But the basin that it did for that stuff, this is 1,000 kilometers square. There are no stations whatsoever. There is like one one weather station in one province and then it crosses another. We're talking about 700,000 rai. And then there's no weather station at all. So the opportunity to get to area and from the, the, the station, that, that the, qual the quality of data is different. We got many agencies that have a lot of data to support. But in my system, I use the forecast of the department is that, uh, that uh, we can extract the data immediately in real time, the ETI. The, 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 the weather department, uh, um, Meteorology department is that we do not have an API to extract this data. It's like, oh, turn on, like what? Go into the website and manually download it. But if you're talking about doing an entire nation, who's going to click on every region? You need a robot and make it automated. As of now, we can't do it. We still use a person to do it. When it comes to the uh, meter department, is that there are two types of information. One that is uh, open to the public, but the data from the weather station is actually in private. We can't uh, get its security. Okay, so the uh, the irrigation department will have issues with that too. You'd have uh, water stations to measure water levels. Just I've been asking for that data for two years and still haven't got that data. That's a challenge. So if the you know, OWR, if you guys can enable the agencies to be transparent, uh, so that researchers or agencies can uh, get into that uh, information, not to tell us to go into the website and download it ourselves. That's only for one station only. But we're talking about the entire country with all the provinces and you got what, 1,000 canals? Who is going to download every single day? No one's going to do it. Um, thank you. Um, there's a couple of things that I think are not quite well understood with Irisat. Irisat combines three pieces of information. One, it uses satellite data to measure the crop water use. And that is the very unique thing about Irisat. It is a new modern way that has never been used before and replaces some very manual methods. That is what is provided. The second part of Irisat is that you need evaporation data from weather stations. And IRISAT only in Australia uses the weather data network and downloads it automatically. That in Thailand can also be done, I think, relatively simply by just connecting the weather data with IRISAT. But it needs evaporation. And you do not need, need many stations for evaporation data because you can interpolate it very easily. The third part of IRISAT is that you need rainfall data. And IRISAT does not predict rainfall. IRISAT takes weather data from, in Australia, the Bureau of Meteorology and accesses both predictions and past data. So, in summary, IRISAT is unique in that it uses satellite data for crop water use. This means you do not need to install meters on every farm. You can save lots and lots of money. 
but you still need evaporation data from the Bureau of Met, but you do not need many stations and you just connect it. You can use rainfall data and again, you can connect it or as is happening in Thailand at the moment, you can do it manually. So in terms of Iristat, I think there's a little bit of confusion, but it is a, but it has some wonderful abilities through satellite. May I also just comment that in water ordering or water sharing in Australia, there are many different systems, but fundamentally the difference is that we have a bottoms up approach. In other words, the farmers have the choice to ask for when they want the water, although in some systems they are still rostered, they are still planned, they still do not get it when they need it. In other systems, they do get it. In Thailand, it is a top-down approach. People, it is planned from the top and farmers are advised. And whilst it sounds like two very different systems, in practice, my observation is that it's not as different as everyone thinks between Australia and Thailand. And that with a little bit of uh, using some of Australia's techniques, Thailand can actually implement with measurement, with IRASAT, with the support of the operators, a very improved system, but it will take time and it may take five, 10 years to change and implement. So there are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Very clear response. Um, thank you very much. As I mentioned earlier, the mission of RID is uh, working on uh, about water. We're glad to work with every agency. We establish projects. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, we work with the local administrative organization along Gracio uh, Basin. So we told them about the issues with this basin and what is the solution. Our key target is the water supply department. Uh, we Yesterday we talked about the water column. When we share the view with Australia, uh, Professor talked about the water quality in CQ water, uh, dam uh, to produce the water supply. Uh, they don't use the water in the eutrophic range and they will find the uh, water in the safety range. That's why we discuss with the uh, another agency yesterday because um, if they receive the water uh, at the bed of uh, water, uh, uh, they will have a manganese problem. And uh, for the surface water, they may have a problem with seaweed. Uh, and next time, they would like to discuss with Dr. Kevin. Uh, once we have met or uh, once we have a discussion, we can expand the, the scope of discussion. Like we can expand the network, and it can involve other government agencies, water supplies, or local organizations. So we are pleased to work with PEA. Uh, we already uh, work with the provincial and metropolitan water supply. We borrow their tools to test the water profile in the dam. And we don't think that we have a better tool than PEA, oh, sorry, uh, the water uh, provincial water supply. So thank you very much, Dr. Arirat, to the end of our session. Um, sorry for taking time so long. Um, At the end, I'd like to thank all panelists and please give them a big round of applause. And I'd like to thank all participants. We hope that this information will benefit you and I'd like to give the floor back to the MC. Thank you, the panelists and moderator. Next would be the closing speech. First, I'd like to invite Ms. Julia Feeney, the Australian ambassador, ambassador to Thailand to deliver the closing speech.
Yassim is still Yassimi, Deputy Ambassador to the, of the Australian Embassy Thailand to deliver a closing remark. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Well, what a day. Um, first of all, can I thank you, Dr. Surasai, and your whole team for hosting us today and making today a really valuable contribution to our bilateral relationship. I wish to also thank all the panellists, clearly experts in their field, for their contributions. I personally learnt a lot, both from the three sessions looking at these new programs we'll be embarking on, but from the three sessions on the ongoing programs. I think these conversations are incredibly important, and particularly as both of our countries are impacted more and more by climate change. So thank you all, and thank you to the interpreters and the MCs, everybody included. We look forward to hosting this dialogue again next year, and I hope the progress in the meantime is fantastic. So thank you again. Top good part. Thank you for your support and for being a part of this significant event. Next, Lucy uh, Kitimukun, the Secretary of the ONWR, for his closing remarks. Dear Fini, Deputy Ambassador, Australian Embassy, speakers from Thailand and Australia, distinguished uh, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Embassy and the Office of the National Water Resources co organized the Thailand Australia Water Dialogue with the purpose of knowledge exchange regarding water projects under cooperation between Thailand and Australia. I'm very pleased that today's event was successful with the fruitful outcomes. This dialogue gave a good opportunity for all participants, especially for me, to exchange knowledge experience as well as the opinions to strengthen our collaboration in the future water management. On behalf of the Office of uh, the National Water Resources, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to the Australian Embassy, the Thailand Australia Joint Steering Committees, the supporting staff and on participants for making this event remarkable. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, co-chairs, the panelists, moderators, and all participants for supporting this event today. Now we have come to an end, and before parting, please enjoy the snack in front of the room. And on this occasion, both of us would like to end our responsibilities as the MCs. Have a safe trip home. Thank you and safe travels. Godspeed.